Eels Busters. In this month, the month of February, in 2001, which film earned 10 Oscar nominations, becoming the first Asian film to get a nod for Best Picture? Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Well done, Ben! That's lovely. Oh. In there, son. Did you know that, Adam? <laughs> I added that to my Netflix list. They added it in 4K on Netflix. I was going to watch it there. You should have added it to your mind yeah, you should have so added you could it to answer your mind. the question. <laughs> I was going to say Lords of the Rings until you said Adrian Phil. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. So, Ben, you're actually winning. You're on 18. Yeah, because you've been cheating. Adam's on 14, and I'm on 12. I'm cheating on. by having knowledge. If that's yeah. cheating, yes, you've got that's what I'm doing. 10 years on me. Oh, yeah, well, that is true. That is slight cheat. <laughs> Adam was only three when Crouching Tiger came out. He was. I was actually seven. He was in his nappies. Oh, you were not allowed to go and see that. <laughs> right, let's go to the news. Excuse me, can you pass me that newspaper from over there? I want to know what's going on at the pictures. Thank you. Game of Thrones creators David Benioff and D.B. Wise are going to I've write and produce a new series of Star Wars films away from the normal storyline. Uh, I don't really know what to say about it. You can't really judge it until it's actually on because some Star Wars stuff is good, some Star Wars stuff is shit. So I mean, it's got good backers. Know which direction it's got good backers, go. so that's a good start. Yeah. I'm not interested in the slightest. <laughs> I'm really not. And even, like, because they they work well with the Game of Thrones content, they're going to move whatever they do when Game of Thrones ends. You know it's not going to be as good. And Star Wars, why go to something where there's so much expectation? You're bound to disappoint. What's the same? Like Vince Gilligan when he left Breaking Bad. Well, Quite. well, he's doing Better Call Saul. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then he did that other show straight afterwards and it was shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It got, got cancelled, didn't it? Something Creek. It got cancelled straight away, didn't it, pretty much? Yeah. Something Creek, it was called. Oh, what was his name? David Chase, who did The Sopranos. That was kind of like... Yeah, well, he did, he did Mad Men afterwards. Yeah, David Chase. Oh, did he? And he did oh. Mad Men. Mm. Uh, along mm. with one of the other guys from Mad Men. This is where you've got to think, is it the writing that's good or is it the people who are backing it? It's a source material, I think, the Game of Thrones yes. is such a good... So that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it is. Mind no. you, there's good source material with Star Wars, though, saying that. Like, there's a lot to go on. But also, in Game of Thrones at the moment, they're, like, they're just making it up now, themselves. And I've got to say, the last season of Game of Thrones is not one of the best, so that kind of suggests they, they can't really do original The only concept. thing with Game of Thrones at the moment, though, is everything that happens, you kind of expect in it now. Because it's I all know. been so badly yeah. foreshadowed, everything is, like, you kind of... You're not surprised anymore because people have you've read into it so much now. It's got so big that everything's been read into. Therefore, if something happens, it's like, oh, okay. It's true. That, 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 still that sick. whole season was just that. We everything we've ever spoken about or ever prophesized just happened in that yeah. one season. And it felt like we'd already seen them break through the wall. It was. I mean, I loved every minute of it, but it just yeah. it was almost like you. It left you with a feeling. Like, Did I actually get anything out of that? Because I feel like it's just. It's happened in my head, so it's already happened. That's the kind of thing. I know. We know that it was... Yeah. yeah. And that's what I... So, for Star Wars, leave it. Yes. <laughs> I'll still be watching. Don't worry. We I'll, spoke you, about, I'll keep you guys. We, we came to the news story <laughs> talking about Star Wars and spoke about Game of Thrones and the whole thing. <laughs> I know. That tells you everything about it. Yes. Then. Like, no one's going to want to see it. They're going to compare everything to Game of Thrones. Uh, forget yeah. it. Matt Smith officially cast as Charles Manson in Charlie Says... From the director of American Psycho. Really? Yeah. I could not see him playing Manson at all. I could. Really? Yeah. I could, got a weird. I don't know. I don't think he's the right. I, his actual looks. Yeah, I could see him playing Manson. Like he looks could look like him, but I don't know acting Ooh. style might be something different. You got to think he's kind of a clean cut guy, so you got to rough him up a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It. Mm, I don't know. How to, what is this? Simon says. I haven't even heard. No, of Charlie it. says. Oh, Charlie says. Simon what says. is it? Uh, it's, 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 it's about it's about it's about Charles Manson. A film about Charles Manson. I've not even heard of this though. Yeah, I know. Uh, but in, interesting. I I I reserve judgment on it. But I, it could be good. It could be bad. That's hard to t- hard to tell. Mm. I've never really liked him in anything. I mean, it's strange coming from the director of American Psycho because I don't know what it's a fit, it's a woman. I don't know what she's done since American Psycho. Let me check. Uh, yeah, I know I'm it's a woman. I, you know, an American know Psycho, it's... as great a film as it is, it's pretty much ninety-five percent of it is down to Christian Bale just being amazing. 
So Well, no, I don't think so. The story's very good, yeah, and I say that grudgingly. Brett Easton Ellis, who wrote the book, the book's very good, and it changes everything ever so slightly at the end. Yeah, but as but, a directing film, it's not a masterpiece in directing. Well... I don't actually no, I don't agree because that scene where they're filming the business cards, the way it's shot, mm. they make the exchange of business cards and the showing off to of business fair, cards. I'm like to be epic. fair, saying that, taking that back now, that bit where he's in the room and he's playing Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah, whatever. brilliant man. Try getting your reservation at Thorsey's now, you <laughs> fucking stupid <laughs> bastard. <laughs> That's so good. Brilliant. <laughs> Guys, you get that for free if you just carry The Joker and Batman. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh. So her name's Mary Harron, and she, all she's done is a load of TV episodes. Oh, dear. Since American Psycho. Well. Oh, she, ep- she did an episode of Six Feet Under. Did she? Yeah. Which one? The Rainbow of Her Reasons. Where someone, oh, yeah, where someone falls off the, actually, that's one. That's from the last season. It's, yeah, it's that- from season five. Yeah, it's season five, yeah. Episode six. Mm. Nice. Well, nice. Well, I, I would watch it. I would watch it. Th- that will probably go up again. I mean, it's not going to be anything like Tarantino's one. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know, he might be good. Why the uh, sudden influx of Charles Manson films? Is it because he's died? It's sixty years. Most likely, yeah. It's sixty years since the first murder in like next oh, October, right. I think. Something oh, like that. Right. So it's kind of like almost like an anniversary. Everyone's cashing in on that murder. Yeah. Really, they need to get me playing him. They do, really, yeah. <laughs> and me, they haven't seen my performance in the very Hitler. famous leader of the house. <laughs> Hitler. Hitler. <laughs> Please link to that in the description underneath this YouTube video. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll, we'll put a little link to our little <laughs> hilarious sitcom. I had nothing to do with this, just FYI. Leader of the house. He, he wrote the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Anyway, enough of that. <clears throat> enough of that. Joaquin Phoenix... In talks to star in the Scorsese produced Joker origin movie. See, that is something that I didn't really want in my life until I knew this was going to happen, and now that's kind of all I want in my life. I know it does. It I want this to happen so badly. Brilliant. It's being directed by Todd Phillips, who, which could go either way. He done Hangover and War Dogs. Oh my! Mm. The only thing I'm going to say about Wacky Phoenix is when it came to Heath Ledger. And when it came to Joe Letter, you weren't expecting masterpieces performances by the Joker, but yeah. now it's coming to him. You're kind of you've set the, you've got a very very high bar now that you're setting that you think yeah. is going to hit because like they kind of almost well especially Heath Ledger shocked you all like everyone was a bit like is that really a good call? Is this the best thing to do? Mm. And it shocked everybody. J- Jared Letter was a bit meh. He didn't really get enough to really judge him on, but now you're setting a real high bar. Yeah, I mean you can't That's imagine. Really, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix doing a bad performance. Has he done a bad performance? He know he's got some good, good films under his belt. I don't know. I, I mean, he, yeah, he is very good, but he's a weird guy, and I think that he'll probably just play him really quiet, like a really quiet Joker who doesn't say a lot. Well, this is he this is the thing. This is the this is the origin of the Joker. This film. So it's not even him. Oh. It's not even him as the Joker, but surely he's quite old to play an origin Joker, though. Like when you think origin, well, you think the beginning. Well, Jack, and he's quite old Jack now. Like, is he Joker. Must... Yeah, it's set in a different mm. universe from the, the the run of DC films at the moment, and it's going to be taking place in the nineteen eighties. Mm, okay, like mm. that. I would yeah, prefer if it went back even more, like the nineteen forties, and he could be like a proper gangster Joker. Yeah. Like I'd prefer to go back to the 1740s. I'd like to see it in the 1740s. <laughs> Henry VIII I would beat him it. up or something. I don't know if that's the right time zone. But... Do it in dinosaur time. Yes. <laughs> him and Batman that's chopping up a stegosaurus. <laughs> yes. How old do you Only think Jack Nicholson humans. was? Quick question. How it? old do you think Jack Nicholson was when he played the Joker? He must have been early 50s or late 40s. All right, you got it. Spot on. 52. 52. Oh, you knew. I was just searching. Well I was searching. Nice. That, that's why I asked the question. Mm. Yes. But yeah, this... So he was older than than Thingy. Yeah. But Paul, have you got any news that we don't give a fuck about, or yeah, I do. Or we do we care about all the news this week. I do, and that can lead us on to our next segment, which is news we don't give a fuck about. News we don't give a fuck. About. <laughs> Are you ready to not give a fuck about this news? Yeah, let's go for Please. it. Have you prepared yourself? If I react to it, that means I gave a fuck about it. So you can make no reactions over here. Do you know how Joaquin Phoenix was in talks to star as the Joker? Well, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> did we just talk about that? We just spoke about it, so you have oh, a very shit. bad memory. I thought it was Jack Nicholson going to play the Joker again. No, oh, so it's, it's even better. 
Who is it then? It's a, a cult director who is in talks to star. It's from a cult movie. Who is this director? Movie. This special movie, The Room. <laughs> Oh, yes, I, I saw something on Twitter like this. Tommy Wiseau. Yes, he wants to play oh, the Joker. Really? <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be so foolish. <laughs> but can oh, I tell you, so him, can I tell they, you something? They should give him 20 quid and let him get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> People have done mock-ups of him on the internet and everything. It's so funny. You could imagine it, though. Yeah. You could kind of imagine okay, I actually it. Give a bit of, be, I give a bit of fuck about that news, so I think we should move that to the other segment. I do give slightly a fuck no, about that as well. No, man, no, you don't, man. <laughs> But this is the thing. Listen, this is wait a minute, wait a minute, God. wait a minute. Honest to God, if you're going into an Odeon, yeah? yeah, and you've got screen one, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, <laughs> screen two, Tommy Wiseau's, I'm going into Tommy Wiseau's every <laughs> single time. <laughs> every you time. don't know how long you don't know how long that's going to be in the cinema before it's going to get pulled. <laughs> that's true. And then it will have like cult evenings at the Prince Charles Cinema. Uh, <laughs> can I tell you why this is so perfect though? Why so serious? <laughs> What? Why so serious? <laughs> Tommy, why is that a joke? Tommy was so. <laughs> oh, why so serious? Very good. <laughs> That's one of the jokes you have to read to get. I know. <laughs> That's very good. Why so serious? I very I like much that. enjoyed that. Wonderful. Oh, hi, Mark. Wonderful. <laughs> right, uh, let's get away from that this. Happens. Let's just get away from this now. We don't need to have any more talking about that. It's fine. We're going to trailers. Okay, let's carry on. I don't live in a caravan, so why are you showing me that trailer crash? Okay, did we watch the Han Solo trailer? Yeah. And? Yes. I liked it. It looks very mysterious. Ben hated it. And there's a lot of cool actors in it. Ben hated it. Ben hates I, everything. He's miserable and old. I thought, I actually thought that it was so fucking boring. I knew it. Were you interested it was by Woody Harrison no. and Child of Gambino? No, no, no. I'm let down by both of them. The whole thing I feel the only thing crap. I feel I think wrong with it is I'm, I'm very unsure on the actual Han Solo himself. Yeah, he's a the whole he's thing, a bit man, cheese, man. It's boring. It looks a bit cheese. Yeah, it did. It looked corny. It's it. The the thing is, it's going to make loads of money. It's going to be a big bo- uh, fucking blockbuster because Star Wars fanboys will rush out and fangirls will rush out and watch it, and I'll be sitting at home saving my money, huh? No, we're going to see it because we're going to do a podcast on it. Yeah, we can't miss a big to film a like that. <laughs> Oh, I really hope we don't because I don't. I, it looks so dull, man. It looked ridiculously dull. There was nothing exciting at all. We know who Han Solo is. Why do we care what happened at the beginning? There's not enough yeah, interest in him to justify his own film. It's pro- that's probably true. There is still a lot of mysterious. There is a lot of mysterious about him. Still, what? What's mysterious about him? Yeah, but they think about it. Right, like Rogue One. You don't think they you had tell much me mysterious. exactly what's mis- I know mysterious, what's mysterious about, about him. About him. Okay. him and Greedo. Well, that's Where it. did he get those dice around his mirror? Oh, yeah. He That's what everyone wants to know. Everyone wants to know where he gets episode. those dice hanging. Don't you, Adam? It's Chewy's testicles. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it's Chewy here. <laughs> we don't need to watch the film anymore. There you go. Done. I just, it looked completely uninspiring, and it has holds no interest. We're well, all miserable and old, and you need to open your imagination. Let's move on. Mate, mate, you need to open yours if you're so easily amused. I, I, I kind of agree with, with Ben because it's like if it like Rogue One Rogue One was a time in the Star Wars universe where it was a bit you didn't know about it they kind of brushed over it where Han Solo is a whole character you kind of know him and it's like yeah obvious. but they don't mention this too the, much about his this is backstory. Han Solo in this whole series of films yes we know what happens to him we don't really need to know what happened before the one thing that's annoyed me exactly. is Star Wars fans calling for a Darth Vader film like the fuck man they've had three of them like what the you fuck do you think those three film. were? Yeah, you don't need a Darth Vader film. It literally started bam bam. Maybe people Yoda. Just love to see Vader. Yeah. Vader is very exciting for people. But yeah, I gotta say, dick up. that scene in in Rogue One was the best part of that film. Yeah, it was, and I hated that film, but it was totally. Yeah. Did you get your dick up? Do you go whoop? <laughs> yeah, of course. Just like a lightsaber. <laughs> and it was red. <laughs> oh <laughs> boy. Yeah, I was sick that day, it was green. <laughs> <laughs> little Yoda, you got a little Yoda one. <laughs> That's what he's called. <laughs> little Yoda. Forget, this, forget this nonsense. Um, um, what other trailers are we talking about the then? the next trailer then. The Untitled Deadpool sequel trailer, which I think is what they're actually going to call the film. Obviously really? it will be. Yeah. I quite, I, see, the thing is Deadpool, I like it because it doesn't take itself too seriously. Hmm. And as a person who hasn't seen Deadpool, Ben, what did you think yeah. of that trailer? 
There's a reason I haven't seen Deadpool because I hate Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I hate everything that that film looked like it represented. I knew that just before everyone saw it, everyone was already raving about it. They were going to come out and be saying, oh, it's so funny because it's actually just poking fun at the whole thing and Ryan Reynolds just takes the piss. It's like really cool. It's not. It's fucking boring. It's fucking stupid and I will not be watching this fucking film. The you will be because you're doing another no, podcast on it. Well, These well, are big films. Me out. I'll be sick on that day. I will be sick on that day. I will happily go and see Han Solo. I will not go and see this piece of shit i hate ryan reynolds and i hate that piece of shit film it's crap and i will not be going to see it i promise you i promise you i will not watch it for this podcast that is passion we'll have, a, we'll have a guest actor in that week we'll get ryan reynolds into actually be on the podcast isn't it please get a guest actor to replace because obviously this you're an actor, actor. yes <laughs> i am i'm not really ben off the podcast but bearing in mind people have watched your leader of the house by this point in the podcast so they think you're an actor actor oh yes we are an actor oh, i forgot yes, we are we are we, actually professional actors <laughs> we are professional actors it's very true if we're okay, not let's, messing let's it before, up let's before ben ISIS. actually walks out the door let's move on to the next podcast not podcast <laughs> do you want to see, hang on a minute wait a minute wait, wait. paul did you like it yeah we have <laughs> we've had ben talking about it let's have a little go at it i uh um i expected deadpool to be exactly like this so it didn't surprise me in any in any way and it was just like it's just it's just a, um, a generic Deadpool trailer because we know what he's like. It wasn't even. It, like it, it doesn't give you anything about the film. It gives you just about him. Yeah, and most of that stuff probably not in the film anyway. No, it won't be. It's all foolish nonsense. Yeah, because it's, it's basically a trailer for the film, but it's a trailer for the trailer because it's you're not going to put yes. in the, you're not going to put in the film him advertising him the, the trailer. No, well, it, exactly. It's just it's it's additional. Then please, footage. please, yeah. can you can we can you watch Deadpool and then do the podcast in it? Because I think that's what everybody listening to this podcast right now. Wants. All right, yeah, you're right. You're quite right. I will give our faithful f- faithful listeners what they desire. They want you to. I will watch they it. They want you to be on it. fire. Then they want you to be on fire. <laughs> Mate, if you rage. if you came out and you said I actually quite like that film, it would be the biggest shock of all time. <laughs> yeah, it would. Sometimes, sometimes I think I'm going to really hate a film and then I get turned around. It could help this is, you. I like promise Star Wars. You, this is not one of those times. Yeah. It probably like Star Wars, yeah, probably yeah, watch Force Awakens. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to hate that, but I didn't think I was going to like it. And I you didn't think you were going to cry like a big baby? Are you going to mention that in every podcast that I cried <laughs> at Star Wars? Is that going to be like a recurring item on the podcast? Yes. That you, you, you mentioned have to GTA. Point that out? You mentioned GTA all the time. I mentioned what you call it. The time you cried. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's balanced. <laughs> let's move on. Let's just move on. Foolish balance, man. Balance. Mission Impossible. Fall out. Uh, they just stop, man. Just fuck off. I I gotta say, I I don't yeah. I don't look. Paul, I, I'm going to agree with you. I don't look. I'm going to agree with Paul here. I think. I don't look for Mission it, Impossible films. I'm not no. like, I'm not like a hater of Mission Impossible films, but I do enjoy watching a Mission Impossible film. They're fun. I feel like Mission Impossible yeah. has had its day though. I don't like Tom Cruise. He's really irritating. But he hasn't. Actually, they haven't like, actually done that many Mission Impossible films. Yeah, but they compared to how long it's enough. been out. Yeah, they, it's been like, out like 20 years, hasn't it? Yeah. Or longer. Yeah, but even. then just do it. It's kind of like keep making them like James Bond films or stop. No, but no, but listen, um, listen about this, right? You've got to give credit to Tom, Tom Cruise because he does most of the stunts in that film and you've got to give him credit. I know, he that. broke his arm. Wow, wow, fuck off. Don't you jump go, building You go here. break your it, arm doing a film. It, it, I know, you break your arm. And anyway, he broke his ankle and actually they included the footage of the moment he did it in that trailer. Yeah, yeah, no. He hit, when he hits the building, isn't it? When he hits the building, yeah. Yeah, I'm not stupid enough to jump from building to building. That's why I stay on the floor. I don't break my ankle. Whether or not, whatever your opinion of Tom Cruise is, you have got to admire the fact that he does like to do all of his own stunts. Like I think yeah. he's dick, but like but it's all that kind of old thing. Oh, look at Tom Cruise his own stunt. He's so amazing. He's like yeah, he but it's, the same it, character could... in every single film. He's Tom Cruise in it's, every single time. It's, it's true. He's Tom Cruise in every single film. Yeah, I know, true. I know. But he's like the Drake I, uh, version of acting. He's just monotone and the same. Out of the three trailers this week, that was the best of a bad bunch. But I, uh, if you were going to ask me to see one of them films, I'd go and see Mission Impossible Five. Really? Yeah. Um, definitely. Nice. definitely. I mean, you see, you get to see, you get to see the reason why Justice League was ruined. Oh, why? Because yes. of his moustache. Yeah, Henry Cavill. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Yeah. I see. And, and I, I think Henry Cavill looks quite good as a as the baddie in that. Yeah, he does. I think so. Yeah, he looks like he looks a I bit like you, Paul. Oh, does he? Not? Like, That's it doesn't nice look bad. Mission Impossible. It just, it's just done. The just, it's just, come on, it's just done with. Like Pirates of the Caribbean, they're great films. They're not all great films. They're all right still, but they're done. The first one, they the first one was very good. 
they are done. But I don't think Mission yeah. Impossible had a film where it's like that was absolutely terrible. I've only mm. seen the first one. I think I've always dodged <laughs> all of them. Yeah, because they don't excite you. Yeah, the There's trailer kind of did. Mm. You're gonna get more it's out the music. of Star. We get more out of the Han Solo film than you would out of Mission Impossible. I, I think it's. I've had Star Wars overkill the last three months. I saw Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rogue One all in the space of like um well a fortnight. So. I there is a lot of Star Wars out at one time, to be fair. I'll give you that. Yes, far get, too much, get far ready, too much. Get ready with some more by the Game of Thrones creators. Yes. Oh, Christ. <laughs> because and we then they've got, got what's his name do doing? Rian Johnson, he's going to do um, a whole separate thing about, I don't is know. Is his name Rian or Ryan? Ryan. I don't know. <laughs> Ryan, is it? Uh, maybe, it, no, I, oh. maybe it is Rian. I think it's Ryan. It's R-I-A-N. Yeah. If anyone knows the real answer, put it in the comments below. Yes, yes. But like I only found out today, it's not a cream egg, it's a creme egg. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's mate. not. <laughs> no, it's not. It is. It is. That's how you say it. No, no it's creme mate. egg, mate. Uh, like, because it's spelt like you say creme fraiche. Oh, Lord. I beg you go into a shop with me <laughs> and ask the shopkeeper for a creme egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know no one calls it that, but that's actually how you should say it. Cadbury's themselves put it on Twitter that that's how you say it. Because well. obviously the world needed to know. <laughs> Yeah, now, I'm just yeah, saying. Now we have the an thing is, about nobody calls it that, but you are right. You, that is how you pronounce it because that is how it's spelled. But no one calls it a creme. Yeah, that just sounds exactly. absolutely horrible. A creme. Yeah, it does sound disgusting. Creme. It does. Horrible. Oh. No anyway, before we get any more of topics, should we send Ben off to watch a little trailer? Yes, our famous segment. Ben reacts to a trailer. Right, oh, yeah. Ben. I need you to close your ears for about fifteen seconds while I just tell Adam yes. what you are actually watching. Can you do that for me okay, now? Okay, uh, I'm going to disappear for 15 seconds from now. Okay, Adam, so we're going to get Ben to react Ben's to the, cunt, the new year he is. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting him reacted to the Venom trailer, but I've removed anything that's anything to do with Marvel or what the film actually is. Because I don't... Okay. It's a little experiment because I don't think the film actually shows anything or looks anything like that kind of movie. So I just want to see what he okay. thinks. Okay, let's go. I'm back. Hello, you're just oh, in that was, time. That was good timing. Just, that was actually fantastic timing because we just did not schedule any of that. It was all off the cuff. Yeah. Well, I we didn't know, schedule we into our day. Out. We normally schedule what we're we going to say into our day. Yeah, we didn't tend <laughs> to come back at this particular time. He just came back at the right time. 15 seconds. I'm so perfect. in sync with you guys. You are. Yeah. Man. You are. In sync. We have Justin Timberlake. It's going to pop up out your screens now. What? <laughs> oh. Because so, he's time, doing an in sync joke, I believe. No. Oh, okay. I thought you were doing an in time joke. <laughs> Oh. All right. So you always film related, highly yes. effective. So then, okay. Uh, you sent me a little viddy. Yes, I sent you a little video. Let's go watch it. Okay, I'm going to open this video up here now and just start talking as it plays. Here we go. No idea what this is. Shots of a lake from a bedroom. Someone in an MRI machine. Very serious. Beep beep. Sony. Lovely. Columbia. Everyone's got their thing. He says. This looks old, but okay. I know what this is because it's Tom Hardy from behind. So this must be Venom, and I haven't seen this before, so let's see. Tom Hardy sounds weird with an American accent. I don't even know what Venom is. Very serious with this music. There he is now. Riding the motorbike like only Tom Hardy can. Screaming, screaming, screaming. In the MRI machine. Demons. Yeah, it's the bunny from uh, Dirty Darko. Or it's not really, it's just a V. V for Venom. That looks alright, actually. Really? Yeah, it looks... looks uh, do you know what? It looks alright. I'm surprised you actually know what the film that was. Well, I was aware that there was all this Tom Hardy nonsense uh, recently because of a Venom trailer. I obviously didn't watch it because I could give a fuck, but... And you know what Venom is? He's part of the DC Universe, is he? Did you say DC Universe? Yeah. I should kill you right now. Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> is he Marvel? Yes. <laughs> okay, he's Marvel. Well, uh, is he a bad guy or a goodie? He is an anti-hero. He's, he's, he's mostly, he's mostly a them. bad guy because he's, he's the villain of Spider-Man. Okay. But he's also got his own comic where he's like an a anti-hero. Well, interesting. But that was a little science experiment because I removed anything that was Marvel because I didn't think you'd know what the film actually was. Oh, so you edited that video yeah, that I you edited sent it, to me. So there was nothing oh, Marvel. Oh, very good. Right? Yeah. But if you, if, you, if you went into that film not yeah. knowing what it was, would you know that was a, yeah. a, a comic book film? Uh, yeah. That, well, from the way that trailer was framed, even if that... Even if I wasn't aware that Tom Hardy was doing a Venom thing, I would be totally aware that, that that's a superhero film, yeah. And what would you think that film was about? A guy who was changed when he went for an MRI scan. 
Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would. What else is it? Everyone Why gets does he freak out in the MRI scans. machine? Is that what happens? He, he goes for no. a, a head scan and, and he... No, 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 no. So it's... Um, Venom come, it came from like a comet from outer space. And it's got this, this like black goo and it attaches itself to a host. So that, that host would be Tom Hardy. Mm. Uh, the, do you know what? As soon, like, it's only been a minute since I finished watching that. I already don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. While I was watching it, I was quite caught up with it. But now I look back on it and think, see, most, I, I, I don't need to see that. See, most people have been hating on that trailer because everyone loves he Venom and it do not show anything about Venom in it. Well, that's good in a way. Mm. It's good in a way, isn't it? It says something for the film. Not really, Why, because at the same time, revealed. the film doesn't show any. That trailer doesn't show anything that's really interesting in the film. Well, this is the thing with trailers nowadays, though, man. You don't want the whole film spelt out, and you don't want your big surprises revealed. It's good in a way. You don't see that. It's like if you want, if you go and see if like if there's going to be a new Jaws, you know that there's a shark in it. You know what the shark's going to look like. You don't want to see it in the trailer. You want it hinted at, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. I guess. I guess. And Michael Myers, when they do this new Halloween film, when the trailer comes out, I want to see the briefest bit of Michael Myers, and that's it. No, you're going to see him Hopefully stabbing they everyone to up. Podcast. I don't want to see any of that. <laughs> I don't want to see any of it. <laughs> I think you will, mate. Don't love. I think you will. They just finished filming, haven't they? They've wrapped. They have. I'm very, very excited. Yeah. Very excited. Nice. Michael Myers. He came home to kill. Beautiful. If you follow the guy, the guy, sorry, I could, we're going off topic here, right. but the guy who played Michael Myers in the original one, I'm sure we said this last time, but he's playing Michael Myers again in this one, and he's like almost 70. Oh, wow. But he keeps, he yeah, and he keeps tweeting hints at what Michael Myers looks like, but not revealing it. So his tweets are like his shadow when he's in costume. And, it might even be better uh, than the actual a film. A bit of his hair. Well, oh. Yes, tweets would be better than the actual film. Is that yes. like Cloverfield, the actual film? Behave yourself. How old are you? <laughs> oh. He looks about anyway, 12. Move oh. on to our, our main topic this week. Yes, let's move on to our main yes. topic, the feature of this episode. The main event. Here is our feature topic, plus Adam might do a rubbish plot summary. Are you fucking serious? Guys, spoilers ahead. Black Panther Lovely. tops Wizard of Oz as Rotten Tomatoes' best movie of all time. Will Smith calls Black Panther spectacular, said it nearly brought him to tears. Black Panther breaks February box office record in opening weekend. Adam, could you please tell us what the plot of Black Panther is? Basically, first time Black Panther is a superhero, Marvel world, all that shit. First time he saw him was in Captain America, and um, the first time he's been in the film, and this is now an origin film, so it's just him by himself, and if you watch Captain America, it's proper spoiler here, his dad dies, and this is now him becoming the king of his country, and I've also forgotten what his country begins. Oh, begins yes. Wakanda. Yes, well Wakanda, done. that's the one. <laughs> I wanted that's to guess. I remember now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wish he, I should have let you guess. <laughs> yeah, I was going to remember it eventually. It was like on the tip of my tongue. I just couldn't get it out. Um, yeah, and then Michael B. Jordan comes along and he's like, "Nah, I don't want you to be the king and whatnot." And that's the film. That's like that's exactly what he said. Actually, that is taken exactly <laughs> like straight from the script. Nah, I don't want you to be the king <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did say that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the good summary though. Nice. And then I'll let you watch the rest. There's also a rhino in it. There is. I hated the rhinos. I forgot to put that in my point. I hated the rhinos. They were, that was a stupid right, so part Panther. of the film. That was a stupid part of the film when the rhinos came. They didn't need to be in there. Agreed? All right, hang on a minute. Well, wait, wait, wait. Before we go into that stuff, just so we know where we all stand, okay. let's just each say our marks out of 10, and then we can discuss, just so that people know from the off where we stand. So, Paul, marks out of 10? Seven. Mm. Okay, Adam. I I went for a solid eight, and I'm gonna go for a solid nine. Way! Mm. I could. I was very t- like, if I had to b- give it points, I would have probably gone more towards the eight point five. But as a whole point, yeah, it's an eight. I don't think it qualified just for a nine in my scale. But okay, yeah. do you what? Do you know why it qualifies as a nine for my scale? Because I was ready to hate it because uh, I'm just not into these superhero films. But this one. It's completely it brought, different. It brought, yeah. I mean, it's not completely different. Like, don't get me wrong. It's got a different still, feel to it. 
It's got like a, it doesn't feel like it's you've seen it's, it before. Yeah, it feels like some, something new. And the reason it's that it fresh. feels like something new is because, yeah, li- listen, we're dealing with an all-black car, so naturally that feels new and fresh to look at. And also, you're seeing a lot more women, powerful women that are on screen, not just fucking assistants to the side. So that's important. But ultimately, what fell apart which always does for me with these sorts of films is at the end you know the fucking hero's gonna live and the final 20 minutes is a bit like well this is nothing new yeah. it's just special effect fighting all of these films end like that and that's why it doesn't get a 10 but for me I was really surprised and also they wow, took they touched impressed. on some subjects in this film that I was very surprised that a Marvel film a mainstream film would have hit on during that film tell us like what you're what? talking about like issues of like they were talking about slavery and they were talking about like you were making jokes about it when they said um when the daughter said to him like to Mark Martin Freeman would you want colonizer like you're not going to get that type of stuff in other it's mm, very it's true. almost ref- like it was just like those type of things that made it just I don't know it brought it away from the, the normal Marvel films it felt like yeah people people who made the film cared about it a bit more it stood I for something so. more than just a film it did it is it is something it's more. Also, it is going to be more than a film. The soundtrack for it is amazing, and you should I don't, listen is to it the really though, Adam? Listen to the album. No, no, no. no. But this is the brilliant. thing. I listened to the album after I watched the film, and I really enjoyed I think the, the album. Better than the film. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed the album, but when I was watching the film, I was like, "Where is this really good music?" Yeah, exactly. yeah. I don't yeah, remember they did, any. Of they came it up in bits, there. but they should have put more of it in there. But the, the soundtrack, the album is really good. I heard Kendrick for like ten seconds in that entire film. Yeah, this is the album, Ben. You'll love it. Unless you already have. Well, I really liked the film, though. I really, I, I, it took me by I also surprise. Felt, not massively. I actually but, like, really liked Andy Serkis in it. Yeah, he was very good. He was a very good character. I know. Almost when it, when he died, I thought, hmm, this film was going to drop a bit now. It's kind of lost its main... That was like the main pull of the film when I was watching the beginning. Like, he was the best thing about it. No, 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 no. I no, thought no, he, he was. No. And then no, he died. No, no. And when he died, I thought well, it might could, it could. But then Michael B. Jordan like came into his own. And he's a really cool wait. Character. Okay, get, all right. This is where I'm going to take you to talk. This is why it gets a nine for me, right? Whenever I've watched, and I have what, even though I don't like him, I have seen. I've seen Iron Man, and I've seen Thor, and I've seen Captain America, and whatever the fuck else. Not all of them, but I've seen like the first ones. Right? They're all boring characters. I don't care about them. You're only interested in the villain. Yeah, yeah, and they very they film, struggle with villains a lot. Marvel do, they do, they do, and to a, to an extent, you could say they struggled with a villain in this one because it wasn't like an archetypal villain. But the thing is, he was fucking interesting when he was when he was on screen. I was like, I want to, I want to see what he's doing. I want to hear he's what he's really say. good acting. It was actually like he's the he show. He, you, all the attention's on him. Like yeah. Sam Rockwell in Three Billboards. Not the same yeah. standard, obviously, but. That but kind of I, I found pool. I found him interesting. He was charismatic. He was funny. You could believe in him as a king, and you could believe in him as a superhero. But for me, actually, it didn't cut. It didn't really feel like a superhero movie until it started going into to the inevitable stupid fight at the end. I agree. I really um, agree with that. Yeah, I did. Re- I did feel when when like you start when you start watching the film, it feels so different from the rest of the superhero films, and then it just get it does get into that same pattern that every superhero film gets into and it's the same it's the same plot summary for every superhero film especially in orange and superhero film because it's always yeah it's always like the tragedy and then it goes like they become the hero they from the tragedy something. and then along comes yeah, a villain they gain it back and then this he- the villain is like similar to the hero but like wants opposing like ideals i would have been quite quite liked it more i think if michael b jordan didn't die and he kind of turned around he had a great that I mean his last line is going to be iconic it's going to appear on best movie lines for yeah. years to come yeah that, that was quite what, good what about getting line. thrown in the ocean was yeah. it was yes that with my ancestors yeah. yeah all the ones who jumped then out of the boats to, to then to it. die but what was it uh, better to drown in the ocean with my ancestors than to die in bondage in, yeah. yeah I mean I, but, I, I, I missed re- remembered the line but it was fucking something cool. along those lines yeah, the thing is, this this although it was fun and silly, it was serious as well. That's what also it struck, I felt not serious it, in a dark. I really mind, liked but... is the humor was not forced in a lot of films oh. now with Marvel films. They've gone, especially after Guardians of the Galaxy, they've gone down that humor route a lot, 
and like, like Star Wars did the same yeah. thing. The whole film was built on humour, but it all felt fake. With this, it was all like naturally flowing into the film. T- totally. Totally. It didn't feel like you were like laughing without even realising that you're laughing because you'd... I know. The, okay, you wanna know the funniest moment in it? The funniest moment in the entire film is is when something happens and he goes, Delete that footage. <laughs> oh yes, when he gets punched when the <laughs> <laughs> machine <laughs> I was cracking up so and much. And like the flip flops, like when they're like looking at like the, the f- flip flops. I know. Like... What? What? Are I, those? There was a one what bit where I was like, I'm not. Sh- yeah, I wasn't sure if I liked that or not. No, I didn't like uh, it. That, when, when she said that, I that thought, oh, that's forced. a little bit too 21st century for me. Yeah. What that did was you say? Too forced, that bit. When she said, "What are those?" When he's wearing that the flip flops. Like but his though. response afterwards was funny. But there was yeah, a, there she was a lot of humour as well. She was like, she was. But all the pretty much all the female characters were like, and hers was good. Cool to see them. Hers was a good character because there was a development within her character. As she's gone yes. from you thinking she's just a sister, the scientist who's kind of in charge of all the technical side, to then suddenly becomes this person at the end who then tries yeah. to. Yeah. Not just. They're not like just one person, are they? It was. Yeah. And uh, it was good to see what the women were doing was not dependent on what the men were doing. And that's why I, I dislike. I'm I, quite an in joke between us is that I hate women in films and I don't. What I hate is how women, like the women characters in films, yeah, like they're, they're typical pros- prostitutes or sluts, or it's always something to do with sex, or or they're kicking ass alongside a man. So when you get representation like this, where it's not sexual and it's not about them being but there just also, to support the man, that's that's what I like to see. But it's also that's the same with like yeah. black people in films, because black people in films are normally portrayed as criminals, or they're portrayed as your. They're not. They're never the the main. They're very rarely you're the main person. You're the very the, the main protagonist of the film. They're like they don't they don't evolve as a character. Their characters are very one dimensional, and they're into this. They're never built as like they can actually do something and help the film. They're always kind of on the side, and that's why it's quite yeah. refreshing in a film like this to have something completely different. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and that's probably why this film's got such a big reaction from all these people is because suddenly it's like especially for someone like Marvel to suddenly put out a film like this owned by Disney I know like to then be like almost the f- well <clears throat> not I'm going to say the first people but the mainstream of your kind of your hot, your half time blockbuster isn't it that's what this film's meant to be the kids yeah. are half term to then put out this film yeah see I, pre- I appreciate all that I appreciate the message and the characters they've they've built in this film but I feel like this the story it's is the weak and all the a- like you're looking at it as more action. a superhero film, though, yeah, aren't like, you? Yeah, it's, well, it's, it is a superhero film. I mean, for a Black Panther film, you don't see much Black Panther. That's true. Yeah, but it's the origin you see him because he's developing as the person. It's a Black Panther film, and you don't see much Black Panther, and all the action's CGI. Yeah, but they all are in these these Marvels. If I'm going to a superhero film, I want to see the superhero stuff. Like, there was loads of council meal- meetings and stuff like that, and I want to see the action and him actually being a hero. Yeah, but that's, See, that's, that's interesting because like, I liked it because they didn't show that stuff. Yeah, but they're also you got to look at it as a film. It's like you're not just going like you go see Avengers. It's going to be full of action, but this is your time to develop characters and you get to know the backstory of the character. And I, you're showing I action the whole that. time. Him beating that. people, him fighting people. You're not really going to understand. Like it's almost like where he came from, what he's got to deal with. He's not just a superhero; he's a king as well. He's got to run a country. Yeah, but, yeah. See, I, I I like that part of the story. I liked his origin. And showing where where he came from and what this what Wakanda represents and blah 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 blah, but the action parts were boring. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you yeah. that. That's probably why it probably didn't get a nine for me because when it was when it get good, it did for the car chase scene. I thought was very good, but the, the fight car chase at the scene end, was yeah, good. when he ripped the tire off. The, car, the fight at the end wasn't a bit. That was all a bit. <laughs> the stuff yeah, at the end is, the was the end. poor. The action at the end was poor, and yes, the rhinos were stupid. All of that was poor, but it always is. I found that in all all of the Marvel climactic fights, it is. Yeah, but you yeah. can make it. Also, you can make a good action. Like you can make a good action film as well. I mean, John Wick shows that. John Wick is so good with the action. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like, um, but it's like the only thing that he kept doing in that whole film, action wise, was building up his energy and unleashing it. And he kept doing yeah. it, kept doing it throughout the whole film. Mm. But I liked, I liked what he stood. I liked what he stood for. And I liked how he composed himself as a person. That's why, for me, I quite liked those council meetings. I like to hear those council meetings. Because for me, it's like in Game of Thrones, when it's done well, those meetings where it's just talking can be just as good as, as the epic action scenes. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And for me, I agree with you. The action the action is not 
all, all that. But you know, you know me, my personal preference anyway when I see these sorts of films is not for action. I like dialogue and whatnot, which yeah. is probably why I like I like nine. But then I can see why you would not like it because yeah, that's totally what you you want to see from a superhero film. Yeah. So that makes sense. It that almost feels sense. like it'd be better if it wasn't actually if he didn't class itself as a superhero film. Yeah, it probably would be. It, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. It would. It would. Probably would be actually. Also, the one thing I didn't like in it is the guy from Get Out. What's his name? Daniel. I never say his surname. Yes, yes. I didn't yes, like yes, him yes. as a character. He really Kaluuya. irritated me as a character. That's his character true. was Daniel a bit. Kaluuya. He, I feel like they got a great actor there, and it was kind of just he was kind of wasted in his role. Yeah, it was a bit. It's a weird that character. Role. That was a, it was weird, a weird one. That was weird because it was like he was he was on the side of the villain, but then he it was like in the between. It was like choose your side, yeah. mate. Choose your side. It was just I, I knew what they, what they were trying to do is they were trying to put him on the flippy floppy on the fence. It was like flippy if you floppy. can turn him over, you get the people back. <laughs> he was like. He was kind of like he was meant to be flicking between his long term friend or this new guy that's just turned up. Though he goes, he's kind of got the legitimate right. He has got a right to be here as the king. I'm going to help him out and help the people. But they kind of he just didn't really stand for anything in the end. He just kind of no, he didn't. And I didn't, I didn't actually like his performance, Daniel Kaluuya's performance. Yeah, but I feel like he didn't have anything to go with. I don't think he had a lot to go with though. I feel like like the way I like the way they all shrug their shrug their shoulders during the challenge. You know when the challenge? Oh yeah, yeah, they yeah. Oh yeah. Shoulders. Well, that's where, like that where that's where he the um the Black Panther's been taken out of him. Yeah. Yes. Do you know mm-hmm. what I wasn't too much a fan of was, was Martin Freeman. It felt like you need a to- your token white boy yeah, in there, there. Like- and like Martin Freeman feels like the token white boy you put in a black. Have film. you seen that joke? Have you seen that joke that came out? I don't know if you've seen it. That um, Martin Freeman and Andy Serkis have both been in Lord of the Rings, and that the only two white guys in Black to- in Black Panther, so they're called the t- Tolkien white boys. <laughs> Very good, very good. <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of that, there's a video, like three or three and a half minutes, which is all the black people in Lord of the Rings, the entire trilogy, and you watch it, and it's literally just orcs, just really? orcs. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of shocking, oh, yeah. man. Mm. You don't think about really it, but it's shocking that. to That's see. That's what I mean. That. This is what I mean. This is what I was saying about black people being traded in film. That's what they normally just put down as you put down as your village, you're no, you're no good. Yes. And that is why it's refreshing to see it in a film like this. And that's not. why, yeah, I was super happy to see it, and I was super happy that they were talking it with the African accent. Yeah. And there was they had to another... fight for that. What? They the had to film? fight to use the African accent. What? They had to fight Marvel to use it, or? Uh, whoever the studio oh, was, they oh, yeah, said, Mark, we, want, yeah. "We don't want you talking with accent. We want, we, you know, speak American. Speak yeah. American. You're American." Yeah, accent. it ruined it. Like, a bit no. if they did. Yeah, of course it yeah. was. Of course it was. And also, the main, what's the guy? The guy who was the the guy they saw at the end, who was in the snowy mountain bit. The leader what was his name. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember the guy's name. He you know him. It. Yeah, he. And I've just finished watching Persons of Interest, and he was one of the main characters in like the series three and four of Persons of Interest. And it was quite I'm nice to see him. Always banging on about Persons of Interest. It was quite nice to see. It was one of those shows that loads of actors have gone through, like when you kind of coming up. But he was one of the main villains in it, and it was quite good to see him in another role that was really brought him out. I quite liked him. Mbaku. Are we can we settle Black Panther then? No, I've got some other stuff. Well, hang on, no, no, no. Well, we yeah, go on, people. Paul. Drop some. Okay, drop tell, some tell me how you, how do you feel about this? Um, so, do you know like how they're showing all like the the tribal ceremony, and yeah. so it's all like that feel of it, the tribal ceremony, all the epic landscapes, and then it goes like it shows um, Kaluuya and in, in like the the huts in the little village, all the farmers, and then it kind of yeah. cuts to like the busy Wakanda city, and there's like guys in suits yeah. and like. It's like kids in like normal city with rucksacks and people sitting in cafes. Do you think that was a bit weird? The contrast between those. Yeah, I never really thought about that too much. To I feel like it was kind of yeah, that was because that's what they wanted the outside world to see, didn't they? That's what they wanted. They didn't really want to know that like they had cover. underneath. It was a cover, wasn't it? It was, it was a all... cover. Yeah, it was a cover. Mm. Yeah, yeah it was a... no, if everyone looks down, they would see nothing. They're either going to be but trees. Then, but that's the which... thi- but the thing about that is it feel it felt too generic. Like it was just en- like any other city. Do you know if you go to a different. If you just went to somewhere, yeah, but we know. But when you world. look at the buildings, there it was. They weren't generic your brick buildings. They were kind of made out of like they almost looked like they were made out of natural materials. Like they looked like they had loads of plants growing on trees growing up. Um, yeah, but it's the, it, it looked, looked like, like a, a city where you'd expect to see a McDonald's. Oh yeah, because yeah, but that's like generic. That's what, if you design a city, you're going to design it like Blade Runner in the future. It's just they adapt it a bit. It still looks like a normal city, just busy in, in rain, but. It's still I didn't, think, the I basis, didn't think too much about it. No. The ba- the main basis of it is, but they kind they did put their own twist on it a bit of all the natural stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just felt a bit. I felt it felt a bit off. I felt okay. it needed it needed well, to be a bit more more personal to that city rather than just make it look generic like every other city. 
When you went Ooh. to see the film, was your cinemas packed? No. Mine was. No. Every single... I was supposed to see it opening night, but every single seat was full. Well, that's why You saw it opening night. But I, I can't remember... The, like, even when I see Star Wars on the first night, it still wasn't packed to the rafters. Well, people are staying at home and streaming movies increasingly nowadays, and that's too. why. They are indeed. Very, very terrible. I have one more thing to say about this film. I've okay. got f- a few. Okay. Do you want to go first? No, no. Okay, let me just finish my point off. Um, the plot was very obvious. Like, the villain plot. Like, every other story. Yeah. You s- So, he has his fight, his initiation fight, where to where he's been challenged to become king. You instantly think, he's going to win it. He's going to win against the, um, the gorilla tribe. That was obvious. Then the villain comes along. Mm. Let's have exactly the same fight. What's going to happen? So obviously he's going to lose. You know that he's going to overthrow him again at the end. It's just like there's three points where the plot's so obvious and they're the most important parts of the story. Yeah, but that's because it's Marvel, but, though. That's because it's simple. Does, doesn't this happen in all of the superhero films, though? What, when does a superhero Paul, film ben, ever ben surprise you? Something like The Dark Knight. I, I know, but see, if we always go to that as the exception to the rule. The Dark Knight, yes, that surprised us. But what Marvel movie has ever surprised okay, you? I would say, and I would, I would say most of the DC films actually, they don't follow what? a normal what? script, like like Batman vs Superman. Oh my boy! No, no, Let's I don't think that. I don't that. think they do. <laughs> I don't think they follow the generic script like like um, Marvel films do. No, it, it was all over the fucking shop. Yeah, it but still, a, it's the, done. Pauling so, filmmaking. It was all over the chip shop. <laughs> Shut up! There was no fucking structure to that thing. Here, like, would you prefer to see it Batman vs Superman over, over this Black Panther? Yeah, because I absolutely love that film. Oh, Adam, I'm. Um, I think I'd have to go Black Panther. Yes. Why are you ganging up on me? I, I, I wouldn't know. gang up on you. Paul, I'd, I'd you're like a bully. You're like DC. a bully I in a playground. I prefer, I prefer. I prefer DC, like over DC characters to uh, uh, Marvel characters. But at the end yeah, of the day, yeah, but what, who are the Batman DC vs. characters? Fucking Batman, like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. And anyway, listen. Here's the thing. Black Panther <laughs> not only presented women in a very strong fucking way, it did it a million times better than I'm sure Wonder Woman did it. Because I was talking to some people mm-hmm. today, females, and they were talking about how Wonder Woman isn't this great film for women because it's all about Batman telling her, you can do it, you can do it, no, she's, and being picked up by a man in, in order to do it. He's not in Wonder Woman. The thing is, they always say about Wonder Woman is they still sexualise women in that film. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Well, that's because they're dressed as Amazonians. Honestly, I know, they didn't need to be. They're, they're, in, they're they? in armour. It is hot there, to be fair, on that island, but still. Yeah, but see, but it's like Wonder Woman as well. Wonder Woman, skimpy hot pants and whatnot. Mind you, have been in hot in Wakanda as well, that's now. Cat, cat woman in latex hugging her entire figure. Okay, okay, you could say Batman. It's kind of the same. But Batman ain't in latex. Superman's and stuff. Superman's an idiot. I think that's just a, <laughs> just a thing with super comic book films. I mean, comic books in general. Sexualising the woman. I really, really liked the ending of Black Panther where he's he's bought all of those buildings in the real oh, yeah, world. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. I really very much like that. And but, he gave it to his sister and... Yes. Because he kind of... Her. Because that me I liked it as well because he listened. It wasn't like he died, Michael B. Jordan's character died in vain. He, I know, there was he a died, But there. he left, he left something with the... He left something with him. He yeah. left something like he's like he's actually thinking it made him change his mind even though he yeah that's why it's a bit annoying that he actually died because I think if he did survive he wasn't gonna lock he might not have locked him up he might have actually said like if you I think he, I think he would have I don't think he would have no because he wanted to I kill he, he wanted to kill people change. and like yeah but he gets they, they both change the development of more characters X nay X nay mm. yeah but mm-hmm. I never thought about that that's that's quite good actually that he did actually learn something from um, Michael B Jordan yeah. You don't often get that. Mm. Would you say this is your favourite Marvel film then or not? No. What's What's better? Um, I don't know. As an actual, f- I still prefer like Guardians of the Galaxy because it comes back with the human oh, force and Guardians. God. But it's still, but the it does the other parts well as well. I mean, this film, like, I prefer it in other ways that they don't do. But at the same time, I don't think overall it's my favourite. Paul, I'd say probably Civil War. Captain America: Civil War, Foolish. which actually Black because Panther's the, in. It's actually a sim because it's actually a superhero film. That's when it goes back to that. As an actual superhero film, Black Panther isn't the greatest, but yeah. as an actual that film, that is exactly yes. it. That is that's it, why I don't that think it's it. my favorite Marvel film. Yeah. Well, I guess that's why I like it so much because I don't really like superhero films. Mm. Just I had okay. That was one of the things I was going to say actually. Inevitably, well, there's two things. Inevitably, they're going to uh, put him in um, an Avengers film. 
He's already yeah, yeah. kind of in one, but yeah, he's going to be in the next well, one. Whatever, not in a cameo appearance. What I mean is in like the next yeah, ensemble yeah. Avengers. Well, film. he's really important I... in that, by the way, because I don't know if you know it, Ben, but the guy at the end, the Winter Soldier, he's friends Captain America. He dies at the end of the film. And he's like all a bit fucked up still, and his sister then helps him out, and that's where the guy went to hide. And right. it probably means where the next Avengers film is going to take place, because I if see. you watch the trailers for that, it happens in a kind of almost like that same landscape as the Black Panther. Right. So that means they're probably going to go there to find him. Well, see, my concern, my concern is when they do this Avengers film, is that it will the character, the Black down. Panther character of T'Challa was his name T'Challa. Yeah, T'Challa. Yeah, that. He like it will actually lose a lot of its effectiveness because it will be very watered down. It won't be yeah, everyone so much a social thing. Yeah, I know. But for him in particular, for this film, for Black Panther, it, it's more than just a superhero film. There's a lot fucking. There's a lot going on. It's saying a lot. There's a lot of message about social consciousness, and that's going to get watered down in an Avengers film. It'll be more just you're a character in a superhero film. So I don't think I would like to watch that. Yeah, I don't think We're you, watch you won't get anything like that again anyway, until then, there's an, another no. a sequel to Black Panther. But even if there's a sequel to Black Panther, I don't I, think so because like it's been done, like it's kind of like now it's had its moment of of bringing everything together. Like yeah, people maybe. still like to go. And the only see way it. it's going to do it is if other films copied the same trend. That's when it will be starting I, to come. I don't see how it's the number one rated film of all time by Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, so Rotten Tomatoes means bit, fuck all to me though. Yeah, I, I, I don't mean anything. Way. No, it's definitely not the number one film. It's not even close. It's Seven point nine on IMDb. Yeah, well, well cool. to be fair, saying that I looked the day when I came out of the cinema, it was a six point six. It's because of DC fans. Yeah. DC fans put it down. Yeah, they they really were against it, weren't they? Yeah. Stupid DC nonsense. Fans. What's the point? Oh, no, it's just stupid. Stop, it's stop arguing. Just watch the films. Anyway, I'm done with that. Yeah, done. Yeah, I'm done with Black. Okay, should we just finish up with what we've been watching this week then, quickly? Oh, we're not finished up with yes. that, Adam. We got a new we got a new segment after that. What's the new? We've segment? We've actually got some questions from people. Oh shit! What? <laughs> well, we will have to see after the next segment, won't we? Let's go on to what we've been watching. Do you want to find out what we've been watching, Big Right now. I've finished season three of Fargo. What, just? I didn't... Yeah, well, I'd wait, do wait, it. wait, I... don't say nothing about that. Don't say nothing about that because I'm, I'm literally about to start season three, so don't spoil that. Okay, basically, I won't say anything, but yeah, when it first came on, I watched an episode and then I missed it. I didn't get to finish it and then it came off 4 OD, so then I fell behind, so I thought I'd just wait for it to come onto Netflix, so now I've just finished it. I'm not inspired to watch that so much. Uh, That's why I, I've when left I watched it, so it long. when I was about to start watching it, I thought I'm not really too bothered by this. But when I started to watch it, I'm like, this. Is, I remember how much I actually love Fargo as a TV series. How do you really rate it, it alongside the other two seasons? Mm, do you want me to tell you or not? You can't. Yeah. You can't beat that second okay. season. We love that second season. Second yeah, season. Second season. Very second strong. Second season's top. It doesn't beat that. I don't know if I prefer it to the first season or not. I think the first season probably just about beats it. First season very good. I rewatched the first season recently, and that was really fucking. Well I think done I forget. Well. I think I forget how well, how good the first season is when I'm watching the rest yes. because it's first yes. season. But yeah, I just like. I don't think it was the strongest season, but I just it just shows the show in its element, and I love Fargo yeah. as a TV show. It's just such a something different. I, I don't think I've been watching much else. I've been busy. Well, oh, I watched. I, I watched. No, I watched Deception. Sorry, saying that that film that Paul recommended oh, yeah. last time around. Did you know, like it? And I very much enjoyed that film. Yeah, good, good. It's just a nice film to well, it's a film that is kind of I don't know, I didn't really see the end coming too much. I did kind of see it coming to an extent, but not to the extent. Careful. It did. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I will watch. I will. Yeah. Get I will on it. Watch it. Get on it so we can I actually speak about up the it. Recommendation. Yeah. I watched uh, Mother uh, last weekend. Oh, yeah. Which was very. Uh, good but also it hurts your brain because you know okay what you're it's one of those films where what you're watching isn't really what you're watching it's saying something else yeah and it took some conversation afterwards to work out exactly what it was about and then when i realized when i went online and i read an interview with aronofsky and he said what it was actually about i was like okay yeah i get it and then it was like but i don't know why you bullet i think i know <laughs> what it's about what it, uh, what, what, the, uh, what I, I remember reading about it it's it's about Earth, isn't it? How we're killing Earth. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, but it's like it's not. It's like directly. It. it, it you've got a character who re- his God. You've got characters who are Adam and Eve. You've got characters who are Cain and Abel. I'm interested in watching that film though. Yeah, I, I recommend yeah. it. Aronofsky's good. I do. So, I do uh, it's good. Watch. I do see it as that kind of film because Darren Aronofsky likes doing yeah. those kind of films. His best film for me is still The Wrestler. I love yeah, that so what much. Great film. Yeah, 
so underrated yeah. that film I think even though he he was he got the Glo- Golden Globe and the BAFTA and, and was nominated for the Oscar the film overall is so underrated no one talks yeah. about it I think that was a per- I, it was I watched it and I did also for kind of forget about it that's the only thing with the press I watched it and I've almost kind of almost forgotten that I've watched it I don't think it has that lasting impression but the North that's remembers. funny why yeah <laughs> I remember. Yeah, the, I remember. I remember it now. You're talking about it like really well, but it's like you're only talking about films. It doesn't only spring to the front of your mind. No, quite. I know. What have you been watching, Paul? I've watched two things. I rewatched Leon. Oh yes. I basically watched never it. was massively won over by that. Huh? I feel like I need to rewatch that film. You weren't massively won over. I wasn't massively won yeah. over by it. It's 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 a good film. It's a nice film. But I watched it with with Zoe because she never seen it before. Zoe, my girlfriend. I didn't remember how well, you like this sexualized is for Matilda. Natalie Portman is. Forgot oh how, dear! Like, and she's very young as well. I know, I know. And what, she spoke about it recently. How after that film, um, all the like reporters and everything, they were they were doing stuff like countdown till when she was eighteen and stuff like that. Bit, bit weird. Oh man! Yeah. But the media is sick like that. They do I that know. so much. I know. At the Daily Mail, horrible. But um, yeah, like I was watching scum. this film, and Zoe kept saying, "I'm not sure about this film. It's getting a bit weird. It's getting a bit weird." And I was thinking, "No, nothing happens. Nothing happens." And then in my back of my head, I was like, "Does something happen?" Because it was getting yeah, really, yeah, like, it was getting really a weird sexual awkward. thing between him and her. Yeah, like, yeah, the, it's the, like that daddy daughter kind of weird shit. Yeah, see, because it. But this is me watching the um, the director's cut, which is basically the American version of it. They cut loads of stuff out because it was too right. sexualized. Because um, they made it more of a father daughter thing for the, the American cinemas. But in right, this okay. version, it That's is really very the sexualized, I remember, yeah. and the I, I mean the worst thing that she says in it is, "I want you to be the one who takes my <laughs> takes my virginity." I don't think it's that like serious, that full on, but it's just said in a way like wow. that. Yeah, but obviously that doesn't quite, happen. She's like thirteen in it, isn't she? Yeah, I know. She said, "I, I want you to be my first. She said, "I want you to be my first. But obviously, it doesn't my happen. Lord. Yeah. All I remember about that is Alt J wrote a song about it. Yeah, I know they did. Yeah, Matilda. This is for Matilda. Mm. Yeah, mm. very good. And I didn't realize that. I always love that great song. song as well. Yeah, it is. It's all about the grenade that gets thrown. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the best thing about Leon then. <laughs> but yeah. And what's the other thing you watched? Thing. And I rewatched Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh yes, yeah. and you preferred it. Didn't yes, you? I, I I enjoyed it a lot more the second time. The well, because you weren't viewing. setting your hand standards so high this time. Yeah, I think that was it. Because you kind of knew what to expect. That was I've always felt that sometimes with films. That's why I feel like if I went to see Star Wars again. The last one that came out, The Last Jedi, I feel like I might enjoy it more because when I came out, Probably. when it came out the first yeah. time, I was just expecting it to be like, wow, but it just wasn't. So then I now I feel like you know what you're aiming for. I f- Almost certainly. I feel like that the same as well. And I feel like I'd be like a free billboards as well. I feel I feel like I Ooh, have probably. to watch these I still twice. think free billboards is brilliant. And I don't know why you didn't like it. Yeah. Twat, but. but anyway. The- There's nothing wrong with watching it twice to get the measure of it, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel that there's some films that you need to watch twice and you do yeah, I think they're almost better the second time round. Yeah, I agree. I still think the best first time I've watched Fight Club was the second time round. Nice. Mm. The film for me which changed the most was Natural Born Killers. When I first watched Natural Born Killers I really hated it. Mm. I thought it was messy, like, oh I don't get this fucking film. And then I watched it again a year later, I can't even remember why, and I was like, This is amazing. This is actually you know, amazing. Actually, I just remember something I watched and I watched it for the second time and this goes back to one podcast we did. I watched Internal Sunshine for the second time. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We were, and I liked we were talking still. about the second viewing. Yeah. You liked it still. I liked, I liked still. it. But I feel it's like. Too soon. I'm the only. The only yeah, it was like soon. a month, two yeah. months apart from when I last watched it. So I feel like. You're I'm the still error in the like, machine, Adam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's always one exception, and, and you're it, my boy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, when Blade, Blade Run 2049. There was a bit in it that I never realised before, which kind of made me like it a little bit more because. I love a plot point that relates back to the other films, right? And that yes. was that the little model horse had a horn missing. Really? Did you know that? I don't remember uh, I that. never... I don't think I... I think I watched it. it so long ago. Like, it was like a year... In a, when yeah, did it come so, out? It came out almost a year ago, didn't it? Yeah, some of that. But the horse, basically, it has a little circle on its head where, it, like, as if a horn has been snapped off it. So it's just broken oh, over time. That's very good. Yeah. And I, that like is that. Very good. and I like that. The only sort of thing that annoys me about Blade Runner, and I still think about it, is what was the point in Gerald Leto's like, character? Yeah, like unless they're making another sequ- unless they're making another one, mm. they might explain it, but I don't want them to. But no, I still watch me it if too. They, I still watch it if they did, but I still feel like, but his character was almost irrelevant. 
And yeah. apparently, I was reading up about it. He was the character was written for David Barry, I think. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't he, hear that. Yeah. Obviously, died, and then he died before it, and then they gave it to Jared Leto. And I feel like they might have adapt done the character more if it was him. And then they kind of probably mm. lost him, and then they might have just thought, oh, we'll just give it to Jared Leto, and then just have the film. It's possible. Do you know it's what? Very possible, it my boy. probably would have been better with him because. I oh, think yeah, David Bowie yeah. can get away with his character not being in it that much and just being like this presence throughout the film. Like in, like he does in The Prestige. Yeah, yeah exactly, just like that. And he's absolutely brilliant. Where Jared it, Leto, like... because he's so prominent nowadays, you're a bit like, well, what is his character doing in there? Yeah, you accept yeah. him because he's in there, he's got to do something. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah. David Lynch turned David Bowie into a kettle in the new team. <laughs> sure <Twin> did. <laughs> 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 Literally a little kettle. <laughs> he did. Adam, you've got all that to look forward to. I really want to watch it just for that moment now. Have you watched the Twin Peaks the return uh, Twin Peaks the movie yet? Miss no, uh, the fucking um, final I, I need movie. to have, I feel like I need to take a step back from Twin Peaks. Yeah, I do, and then watch that. David I've Bowie's had like in a year that. of almost watching it. If yes. that makes sense. Like over time and then I feel you like need more. a little gap and then I'll go to the film and then I'll wait for the Blu ray to come down in price a bit, then I'll move on to that. Good, good. Shall we do our got... letters? Yes, let's move on to the letters. These three males just received emails. Well, what are we supposed to do about it? Fucking read 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 We've got two questions. This is from Marcus Powell, who's at Marcus Powell 87 on Twitter. And um, the first question is... We might get hate mail now. Hold on, don't give out a lot of so. I, hope, I hope we get hate mail. Um, what prequel <laughs> would you love to see made? Prequel? Prequel? Yeah. Jaws. Know. Before Jaws. <laughs> when he was a baby shark. <laughs> no, wait, hang on. No, no, no. Imagine this. Imagine this, right? Yeah, go on. Before the attacks in Amity, it's like six months before that, and it's this small town, and it, it's more of a narrative where you're learning about the people in this town, but at the end of it, or some point in it, the shark, who goes on to be the Amity shark, kills one of the characters in this film. Okay. And you only realise at the end that the film is actually a prequel of Jaws. Nice. So it's like a plot twist. Like a, like a Cloverfield film. What about The Shining? No, what, the you Shining. don't need to see the beginning of Shining. No. Yeah, but like the, before, like... Wait, when there are nice, happy who lived there before. No, no, the people who lived in the hotel before. What do you want to see that nah, for? Nah, I don't want to see that. Uh, but they made you a second Shining, aren't they? And that's just as graceful as it is, so we might move past that. It's a Stephen King. It's based on Stephen King, though, so it's it should be allowed. Mm, I don't know. I don't know what film needs a prequel. I'm just trying to think. I'm just looking at my DVD collection in front of me now. That's why I said The Shining, but I don't know if anything's springing out to me that it needs an actual Finding Nemo. I don't know. That's no. They just popped up. <laughs> Finding Nemo. <laughs> Christ of all the films. <laughs> How about a prequel to Inception, where they mm. where they first create this dream machine? Nah, I wouldn't be interested in watching them build Probably that. Probably not. Probably nah, not. I feel like I'm trying to think of a really good <laughs> film that I love that deserves a sequel, a prequel. I don't really know. I want to see him building no machine. <laughs> you want to see film. that shark when it film. does its first yeah, kill? Do you, you know you want to see that. That, that does sound pretty good. <laughs> I think we should just make yeah, it. It does. Fun. I was going to dress up as a shark. We've got a swimming pool nearby. Just go there. Good. What about Die Hard before? Like, I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> Your choices, boy. I'm literally just looking at something and just trying to say something. How about a prequel to The Matrix? No, no. Yeah, a prequel to The Matrix. How the Earth got taken over by the machines. Yeah. Well, maybe that could be good, actually. It'd be like Planet of the Earth. Planet of the Apes, you actually don't realise it's Earth. Yeah. That could be quite good. Yeah. It could be quite good, And actually. would the yeah. Earth be the same as we know it now, and it's been taken over? Or would it be yes. a totally different Earth? Do you know, exactly it's actually same. Blade Runner. Blade Runner 3 is going to be looking at the Matrix. No. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm afraid I can't answer that question. He's stumped us. We've had our first question and we've already been stumped. This is a great story. Yes, I'm stumped. No, I'm sure we're, stumped. we're not stumped. I'm not it's just yours. you, Adam. I've seen the Matrix. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to say Shining. I don't know. really don't know. Let's move on to the next question. You ready? Who's this so, from? So, this is Marcus. The second question from Marcus. Oh, well, it's very greedy too. with a question. Yes, very greedy. No, to be fair, he's not got much to take off other people. Okay, most awkward sex scene you've ever seen. I know mine already. Oh, I know mine already. From I think we probably might say the same from thing. From the room. The room, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah with that hands creepy down. music. 
I know. Like a porno. The, the rose, everything. Yeah, horrible. Top Gun. Oh, yeah, Top Gun's a good call, too. Yes. I'm going to say Top <laughs> yeah. Gun. Yeah. Top Gun? They're all horrible. I don't even remember Top Gun. Do you know what else is awkward? It's like the most famous part of the film. Pop on them playing yeah. volleyball naked. Take my and breath they, away. No, no, no. no that's not a sex scene. How about, how about in Blade Runner when Deckard just pretty much rapes as a, a robot? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. You know, you're right when you say that. He grabs her and he puts her up against it. It's yeah. true. It's not sex. Yeah. Well, awkward. it is. It is, But it's very rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Fair, there's a could, lot of that now. This whole now, thing this day change. and age, we see it. If we watch, if, if any of you watch Fifty Shades of Grey, because that could maybe change everything. But no one wants to see that. No, no one wants to see that. Shit, that could maybe say it, but that's what sure, I'm it's pretty horrible for that home with that film. All right, we happy. Next question. Yeah. yeah. This is from my brother, my oh, brother shit. Tommy. <laughs> um, from Tommy. From Tommy. Will there be a Christopher Nolan Tommy Robin Wissau. movie? Tommy was out. Will there be a Christopher <laughs> Nolan Robin movie? If so, what would you expect? Actually, there already was because Dark Knight Rises had Robin in it. No, but like a sequel. Plot twist. It'd be, it has to be. It has to be a whole film based on Robin. I don't know if I want it. I think it should be left now. Yeah. At I the think, time I, when I watched the film, I really wanted it, but looking back over time, it should I be totally left. I totally agree. Um, it's too. It's too long now. I don't feel Robin's a strong enough character to have by himself. He's always no. been a bit of a bitch and everything. He is. He lives off Batman. No, Robert, Robin's sick. They should probably don't, call don't him like Robin. I don't know Leech instead of Batman and Leech. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What they should do is pick up with Robin ten years after Batman went away. The pressure's been all too much to him. He's an alcoholic. He's a junkie. <laughs> he's sleeping rough. He's visiting brothels, and like a bad guy comes to town, and you think, "Oh shit, this is going to oh, kick shit. him out of no. his super." And it doesn't. It just idea. makes him like OD the on the Joker. Heroin. The Joker is running a brothel. He walks in there. He realizes the Joker fucking clicks him back into his mind. He then beats everyone up, and he becomes like a ninja. I don't see the Joker uh, running yes. out of brothel unless it's Jared Leto. Yeah, that's what I mean, like no. a gangster. No, I mean, he's like a proper gangster Joker. Nah. We... Uh, maybe Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, yeah, it'd be him. <laughs> Tommy Wiseau running a brothel. <laughs> and he's doing all the yeah, sex come scenes. Come here, Robin, I have girls and, for you. All, all you've got to remember is Christopher Nolan is directing this as well, so therefore yeah. it won't be shit like the room and everything might actually fall into place in it the probably words will. and the lines. It'll probably be sick. It will be. It'll be awful. <laughs> we don't. It'll be absolutely I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. No, I don't want to see it. I've changed my mind since the beginning of the podcast. I don't want to see Tommy Wiseau as Joker. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to go back and watch Jack Nicholson in the original. <laughs> he was the best Joker. No, Heath Ledger. So. Only because... Yeah, but I grew up with that. You know the way you grew up with uh, Batman Forever? Yeah. I grew up with that original Batman. Yeah. And I did watch that a lot. Even though I'm, like, I'm not a massive superhero. I, like, I, that was one of the films from my childhood that I watched a lot. Yeah. So for me, yeah. he is the Joker. Even, I know Heath Ledger was amazing, but for me, Jack Nicholson is the Joker. Yeah. Mm. Appreciate. Okay. I do like Jack Nicholson. Right, final question. This is from the lovely Orla, Orla Hill. I've noticed that lately there have been a few known A-lister stars move from the big screen to the TV. Do you see this as a positive or a yes. negative? Positive. Yeah, for I, their career, I, I really like that TV sh- th- actors in a TV series because it like a TV series like when you go back to Fargo again now with all these actors in it, it gives you like a proper time to develop your character. And it's not so rushed that I feel sometimes it could work better. Yeah, and it get you get to see more of the character, the actor, and he's also allowed to express more of them and get more into the role of a character. The truth is that nowadays I get more excited about a good TV show than a film. And the, for me, the best writing and some, more often than not, the best acting can actually be found in TV shows. Yeah. So I'm glad that that movie is happening. David Lynch, my favourite director, said that art house cinema is dead. No one's doing anything new in film anymore and that yeah. it's happening in TV. Yeah. And that's why people are making the switch. And it's true. I tell you it, you and can also tell a, much better a, stories. A film, a film is over... It's, it's over in three hours. You might think about it next, for the next week, whereas a TV series, you almost live in it for a while. Like when you're you watching do, you Breaking, when yeah, you're watching you're right. Breaking you're Bad, it. you're not watching that in three hours. You're watching that over probably, maybe even yeah. if you binged it, maybe three weeks, let's say. So you live in yes. that character for three weeks and then it stays with you again afterwards. And there's so you're many right. mo- mo- moments that you can pick up and pick into your life that happened. Oh, like, remember that happened in that TV show? Remember that happened in that TV show? It's true. You're right. You can you can build a beautiful relationship with the characters in TV shows, and it's just, you don't get that that time in a film, do you? To build that. No. Would you be I Would mean, you be crying at a six well, feet under can. film? I don't think so. The only thing it's is, though, I always find it's all in how it's done. Yeah. A film is I'd 
films like an all right film is better than an all right TV show, but a better t- a really good TV show is better than a really good film. I, I would love to understand. Yeah, your I know. Logic, I kind of know where he's going. I know where he's going with that. You know, you kind of trying to say what I'm saying. Like in a TV show, it kind of misses the mark. Let's say like your seven point five is on IMDb, they won't be as good as your seven point five say films. Yeah, true. Like actually, like Dexter. If Dexter was a film, you wouldn't like it because you'd just say, "Oh, it just was shit. It just turned shit." But when you watch it in a TV show, you know you actually really loved like the first five seasons mm. before yeah. it got shit. Agreed. Okay. Anyway, I think we've addressed that point. I need to go now really badly, so... All right, Adam, sorry. Right, guys, thanks for listening to that. Remember, you can send your questions and everything to at FilmBustersPod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or you can send us an email, if you fancy, at FilmBusters at Outlook.com. Did you like that episode? Yes. There was a, this was our f- one of our finest to date, I should say. If you've stuck with us, if you people are listening and you've stuck with us, even beyond the point where Paul does the, this is how you send us letters and emails, then fucking respect to you. That's commitment. Yes. We love you very much. Wrist stepper. That's what I like to say. Yes. Wrist stepper. As, I don't know what as this means. Ali G would say. <laughs> is it true? Yes. You know, Ali G was based on Tim Westwood. Oh, it doesn't surprise me. They're no, the same person. Say no more. It was very good. It was a lovely Beautiful. episode. Did you enjoy? Lovely. Beautiful. What do you think, Adam? I, oh, he's gone already. <laughs> he's left us already. <laughs> that keen to disassociate from us. <laughs> Over. He's gone. That motherfucker. It was, that, it, was, it was the jokes we pulled. It was the jokes we said when, when he was said Shining prequel. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't like, like that. It. He, wanted he didn't to, like the way we shot him down. He didn't, he didn't want to see an origin in the house. He wanted to see nice Jack Nicholson with his family. Just having a lovely yes. time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He just wanted to see Jack Nicholson learning that he wanted to become an author and grappling with his craft. That's all he typing wanted. Typing his first novel on a typewriter. That That's all, all it was. he wanted. <laughs> and he was waiting for the cliffhanger where the phone rings and Jack Nicholson picks it up and says, What? What hotel job? And then it cuts the credits and Adam would be so excited. And he'd be like, Oh, there's going to be a next one now. It's like, yeah, the next one is the original. He'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen that. Well, I'll do another one anyway. Yeah. Just him, on, Bless him. just him on the road to the hotel. That'd be the next. The next the <laughs> just, just driving, three hours of driving. It's called talking the shining talking road back. trip. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very good, beautiful. It's